In this video, I'll show you how to put your screen recordings on any 3D screen or device template, and then take it to the next level by animating it. Let's get into it. Sometimes when you do a screen recording, you may want to put your recording in a frame in your video so that it looks like it's on an iPhone or uh, on a laptop screen. Um, so you can get those device frames either in Camtasia or uh, uh, on the internet from a program like Canva. But sometimes those images are not straight on. They may be in 3D. They may be turned a little bit to the side. Let me show you how to put your screen recordings on those device frames so that it looks perfect. Here's a sample project I've got open and I've already got a couple of recordings done ahead of time. I've got a screen recording right here and I have a iPhone recording here. So I'm gonna show them both to you. So let's do the screen recording first. So let's take this image here. This is an image I got off the internet. Actually, I got it from Canva. Um, and what I did actually, I just, I got this image uh, here and I also, um, I put a little bit of a transparent uh, background here off to the side so that we could put some text there or even myself if I was gonna be presenting on this laptop. So we've got this down here. Now let's bring down the recording. So we'll click here and drag the recording down to the timeline. Okay, and that's just a recording that I did of uh, myself in Canva. That's where I make my thumbnails. So what we need to do now is stretch this image out so it lasts just as long as the uh, recording. I see I have to turn corner, sorry, I have to turn um, timeline snapping on. So let's make them both the same length. Now you can't see the background because this is hiding it, as you can see. Okay, so now what you do to get the corners to line up, all you have to do is click on this corner pinning icon right here, and then click each of the corners and drag them to the corners. Now I have to turn canvas snapping off to make this easier and I'll have to zoom in so I can get to the other corners and just put all the four corners, match them up with the four corners of the screen. Okay, I usually like to do it uh, as close as I can, get it as close to correct as I can and then I'll zoom in. And then I'll just make some small adjustments. I think that looks good there. That looks good. there and maybe just down a little bit here okay now let's fit this to the entire screen and that's it so let's see what this looks like so there now you can see the screen recording is occurring within the device frame And when you're finished moving the corners around, you just wanna click back to the select or edit icon. There's a couple of other things I wanna show you, some things you might run into, like maybe it doesn't exactly match up because the corners are rounded perhaps. Uh, let me show you that on this next one. So here, let's grab this image here that I, I took off the internet as well. So this time the image fills the entire background. And now this is the recording I took off of my phone. Let's bring this down. Let me just reorganize here a little bit. I'll bring these down here. And again, let's stretch the image out across the entire timeline. Now let's go ahead and highlight the actual recording. So that, that is the recording. Okay, let's highlight the recording. Click on corner pinning again, and let's match up the corners. As you can see, the corners of our frame in the image are uh, rounded and there's a very easy way to fix that here. All you do is you go with this selected uh, and it doesn't matter if you have corner pinning on or the select, select one on. You can go up here to visual effects and look for corner rounding right here. Click that and drag it to the recording. Not the uh, background but the recording. So now if you zoom in, come over here to the properties where it says corner rounding and start dialing this up, the radius up like this until the corners seem to match. Okay, and then move the corner pinning 
corners again to match up. Like that, I think that looks good. Let's fit that to the canvas. Oh, I still see a little bit of a line here, so let me just fix that one a little bit. I think I just have to bring this over a little, just like that. And you can get as precise as you want. Um, the corner rounding really makes it easy. And then that's it. So then we can play that and you can see how you can demonstrate. While you're doing a demonstration on a, a phone, for example, you can either have yourself in the corner here or maybe have some text appearing as the demonstration goes through. Now let me show you something that's really cool that you can do with this. Let's go back to the uh, uh, laptop recording that we had here. Now let's put an animation down on our screen. So with the screen selected, uh, let's go to animations, drag a custom animation down. Okay, like that. Let me just zoom in here so we can see what we're doing. Okay, and now what I wanna do is put the playhead at the beginning of the animation. And at the beginning, I want this screen to start off full screen. Okay, so let's do that by clicking the corner pin button and you can drag the corners back to the corners of the screen and I don't have canvas snapping on so let me put that back on so there's actually two ways to do this you can put the corners back manually manually like this or an easier way to do it is if you come over here to the properties window see all of these reset curved arrows beside all of the things. These are all the properties that you've made adjustments to. You haven't made the adjustments here in the properties window. You made them by dragging the corner pins, uh, but you can reset everything just like this. Clicking all these back to the way they should be. And then the scale. Actually, the scale should be 50% because of the way I have my Camtasia set up. And then just like that. So now that now we've got it full screen, Okay, and then let's play this animation through. It's like that. You can animate it onto the screen. And you can have that animating onto the screen while yourself, perhaps, maybe you have a, 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 a video of yourself in the corner. You can animate yourself down into the corner uh, of this presentation window. And one last thing I want to show you. Let me just zoom this out, and the timeline out, and pick a new spot to work with. You can do this not just with videos, but you can use corner pinning with images as well as text. Okay, so if we go to annotations, and actually annotations as well, if you grab a shape, let's say you have a, a triangle, say, you can click on corner pinning and skew the triangle by dragging the corners. Okay, you can do that. Uh, you can also go and get some text, drag the text on. Let's just, you can't see the text because it's white. So let's change that to blue. Let's go with a larger font. Okay, and bring the size up. And once again, if we click away and then, and then select it again, corner pinning is still selected. We can modify the corners. And if you want a little more freedom as to where you put the corners, make sure you have canvas snapping off. Okay, then you're not limited. It won't snap in place for you. Okay, so that's another way you can achieve a 3D effect. And then if you want to take it even to the next level, you can then go into visual effects and go down and look for the drop shadow. Bring the drop shadow on this. You can bring the drop shadow on the shape as well. And let's work with the uh, with the text. And we don't need corner pinning on to do what I'm about to do. You can go down to drop shadow and you can change the offset. You can change the blur, uh, the opacity. Okay, and then the angle at which the uh, shadow is being shown. Okay, and you can do that with shapes, with text, 
and with images and videos. You can use corner pinning with all of those. If you want more tips like this, come join me on Tuesdays for my weekly live stream. I live stream every Tuesday here on YouTube, sharing my screen and doing how-to tutorials. I show you how I make my videos and I answer any questions you have live. So if you're looking to level up your videos, join me on Tuesdays. I'm Rob and I'll see you in the next video or in a live stream. I'll see you soon.